Hi folks, welcome to part two of the Keith Fenner Turn Right Machine Works Porsche 944 dash gauge. So in part one, we talked about the first operation and how we get some of these adaptive and 3D surfacing and cleanup ops done. By no means is this a complete fully baked cam toolpath, but I'm trying to, it's the old proverb, teach a man to fish. You know, I'm trying to help Keith and everybody learn some of the tools to use and how you, how you debug and how you help yourself. Because this is a this is a pretty tricky part, and I think it's awesome that Keith is going to tackle it. So now we need to move on to the second op and the third op. The second op I picked to be what did I pick? Actually, I think it was the, the gauge faces. Yep. Again, with the idea that uh, tell me if you guys agree if you've heard of this before, but you always remove the most material in the first op. So that's why we did the inside of it, uh, and then the second op will be the second most amount of material. From a work holding and rigidity perspective, here is what I'm thinking. We've got these four known location pegs or feet. So I made a fixture called JWS fixture here. And this is just a block of a, you know, aluminum, or it could be, it could be other material, that Keith can make and take those four feet and push them down into and he could even screw through at the block I believe in fact Keith had sent me up a, a aftermarket plastic uh, dash thing and I believe the centers of these feet could be drilled and tapped and that certainly won't have any adverse impact and that could really help with work holding because again folks a lot of times machining things is easy it's holding onto them that can be really tricky so how do we make this fixture well, let's do it Right click, new component, JWS fixture for the FF Fusion Friday. L for line, just like we did in part one where I want to click on this plane right here, hold down my mouse, that lets me uh, look through these options, the YZ plane, and I want to do Oops, so, okay, so that's fine. It's not perpendicular. I'll fix that with this perpendicular constraint. One edge, two edge. And if we've got three perpendiculars, we shouldn't have to do the fourth. Correct, because it's already fully constrained. D for dimension. I want this to be one inch. And we'll say that this is a five inch piece of material. So can Keith get by with that? Yeah, and actually, you know what? I think I did five inches yesterday, but four inches might be better because I actually want there to be some clearance around the part. So let's think about doing it this way. I need to locate that fixture relative to the part, and that's really important here. So D for dimension, I've got this projected geometry from the post, which is perfect to use. Again, check out, check out uh, the first video where we walked through doing that. So I can dimension from here to here. We'll say those feet go in point, say 375. Does that look okay? 0.375, that should be enough. And I'll locate this 0.2 inches off. E for extrude. I'm gonna click that shape change the direction to symmetric and I'll start dragging it out to see what it looks like and all we really need to do is cover the four feet although I think if I recall we need a place to locate uh, an X Y and Z location so I drug this out a little bit more to make life easier there might be a better way but that's what I'm doing for now click OK so now I've got this bar, but it doesn't have any of the feet in it. Now there's an easy way to get those in there. You could project geometry on sketch planes and extrude individual holes or modify. Ironically, it's called combine, even though we're doing the exact opposite of combining these two. So click combine. So what's my target body? My target body is what I want to work on. I want to work on this fixture plate. So I'm going to click that fixture. And what's the tool bodies? Tool bodies used to confuse me, but the way I think about it is the tool is what I'm doing work with. So that's what I'm using to 
affect my target body. So I, I want to use this part as a tool to cut uh, my fixture. Oops, wrong thing I wanted to pick. Not that. There we go, that guy. And I want to keep the tools though. Sometimes you want to delete the tool. I want to keep it here. Click OK. Long story short, if I hide the part itself, I've now got the four holes, which is great. And uh, I've got these two little indentations, which are important because we look at the part, the way I've got it held, those are actually uh, necessary because of that, um, the backside of that gauge. So what I would probably do is hide the Porsche dash, R for rectangle, and we're just going to machine out. And Keith, I think, is going to make this on his manual machine. Can kind of just get rid of that center area. It's just clearance, so we'll hit E for extrude, click on all of these, and we'll say negative 0.25. Now, when I have, when he puts the part in there, it should be good. And what I like about this is we have a known location. In other words, the the point of, uh, or the location of the various geometries of his dash is known relative to say a point out here. Because what we need to do is I, I think that Keith is going to use you know a sign plate or angles to mount this at a certain angle so that he can do work on we'll switch back to uh, you know to work on this face and on the front face. So it's really important we need some way to locate the part XYZ. What I came up with was this, this is my part from uh, last night. Let's machine out a little slot right here. Pretty easy to do, uh, you do it on his manual machine. And what, if I wanna look at this part, uh, uh, say uh, square to that face, I'll click on that face once and see the little box with a sawtooth on top? No idea what it means, but it means it does look at. So that's gonna help orient me perfectly too, and I'm sorry, I, I lied, it's not that face I want, it's that face. There we go. And I did confirm with Keith that the bores are uh, in line with the, or perpendicular to that face, which is what I would want. So now I've got this little nugget here, and if I, I would probably hold it in a machine like this, for some reason that just makes more sense to me. What I can now do is use an edge finder to come up and edge find here, that gives me my Y, and I can edge find here, it gives me my X, and I can edge find here, which gives me my Z. That is otherwise really tricky to do when you're holding this part uh, on this second op. So we can see in the cam, it's exactly what I did for the second op, was I've got my X, Y, Z at that point. How did I do that? Edit. I'll delete all this out. Let's just switch it back to say model origin with no point. So orientation would be select Z axis, first option. What is my Z axis? It's that plane. Sometimes it does that. Let's delete these out here. Z axis, this guy right here. What's my X axis? I can click a line like that that's in line with the X axis. And then What's the point? I'm going to pick this point right here. Didn't work. I've had this actually do this before on me. There he goes. Oops. Click back to point. I want that point. I managed to goof here on my so Z axis was that guy. Now I want to just flip the X. So I'll click the arrow, which points it back that way. So we've got it. If we're holding this rough, you know, op one finished piece, I can use the edge finder and a height gauge to locate on this little pad right here, and I get what I need. How do we make this little insert? Go back into model, and I'll switch to the Fusion Friday fixture. So I wanna create something that is really important that it's obviously in line or parallel to this plane right here. I'm gonna activate my fixture, that's this, guy we're working on right here, construct offset plane, and I'll pick 
this top right here. Again, we know that that is the how we want the part oriented, and that is also the same, uh, I can't think of what the right way to describe this, it, but it's perpendicular to the bores for the gauges. I'm gonna orient my view cube to the right, and I can just can move down here. I kind of want this thing, it doesn't really matter, but just somewhere where it's gonna kind of cut in right here. So that's fine, click OK. We can adjust it later if we need to. Remember, it's parametric modeling. R for rectangle. Click on that new plane that we just made. And now I can just drag a rectangle like that. I don't really care how big it is. That's fine. And in fact, rather than adjust the plane so where this rectangle it exists up and down. I'm going to just hit E for extrude, click it. I'll drag up, which does a cut, but that doesn't work because I also need a back edge back here to uh, find my Y origin. So I'll change it to from one side to two side, and that'll let me drag down this way. Click OK. Perfect. Uh, Keith, you can't machine a square corner like that, so I will do a modify, fill it. Hey, here, I'll just say 0.2, plenty enough room. So Keith can put this part up on his bridge port or KNT, come in there with an end mill, and walk out, make out, machine out this little pocket, and we'll use that point right there as our X, Y, Z, zero. Awesome. So for op two, <clears throat> it's basically the same approach. We're doing a series of adaptives to rough out the area, then scallops using avoid touch surfaces to control where the toolpath goes. And I didn't put the pencils in yet, uh, but you would use you could use some pencils to finish out these toolpath areas here. Um, I hope that's the right thing. I'm curious to see what you guys say. I will also say though that it's I find um, better to it's good to get good at a couple of these tool paths and kind of learn and start to master them. Uh, CAM is, is something that you can spend years trying to master every little thing. So if you can get really good at a couple of these things, um, I find, you know, for example, in 2D, I do 90% of our work between adaptive and contour and, you know, maybe trace or a couple other quick things. Um, 3Ds are a little bit more complicated. So uh, that's one reason why I want to keep it simple, especially since Keith is, is new. And at the end of the day, we want to make parts uh, more so than we want to become necessarily experts at CAM. So 2D contour as well to clean up the inside of these bores. That's pretty simple. Uh, the question is going to be holding this part. So I thought I'd walk through what I hope will work for Keith here. We're going to hold this in a vise or some other angle manner. So I want to present this face here perpendicular to the spindle. So let's take a look at what that means. If I hit I, if I click this face. I click this face, I get 49.3 degrees. Uh, now, I struggle with this sometimes, so let's take a look. If I click left, it's going to orient this so I'm looking at the direct side of it, but I want to rotate it. So if I click the orbit thing here once. You can barely see it, but there's a circle around this part. And when I hover my mouse over that circle, it'll let me rotate the part without changing the orbit, does that make sense? So now, uh, this is what it should look like in the machine, or pretty close. So if this angle here to here is the 49.3, well, this angle straight down would be 90 degrees. So am I right? If I say 90 minus what we've got here, the 49.3, that means I think Keith should use a 40.7 degree set of angle blocks or machine a jig or sign uh, plate or something. And maybe it doesn't need to be that precise given, given what the part is. But I think that's the right way uh, to think about it. And so again, more work to do. I'll be honest, folks, I would probably, it would probably take me, I don't know, between four hours and a full day to do the whole part, maybe even a couple of these ops. I mean, to really dial it in. Am I, would you guys think I'm crazy? Uh, I tend to think I'm pretty quick at this, but boy, there's a lot of detail work here. Um, so the third op would basically be the same. You would never take the part out of this fixture. You would just change it uh, in the vise. So you would be holding it with this face here, perpendicular to the spindle. And this one may be a little bit easier, but it's going to be the same thing. 
You could deck it off, you know, adaptive, oops, here, adaptive out the top, um, adaptive out the sides a little, and then scallop to clean up that top. Trying to keep it simple, you would want to use, I think, a pencil tool path or maybe a scallop, again, to confine uh, some of these lips around the part. So most importantly, folks, I hope that makes sense. But let's, again, let's help Keith what people are doing to do this better from a work holding standpoint or from a fixturing uh, or just general approach to this, as well as some of the specific cam stuff. So go ahead, download this file, link in the video description, and do your own Fusion 360 video, and put in the title, please, Turn Right 944, all one word. That way we can search YouTube and kind of see it, or feel free to post it um, on our Facebook wall at NYCCNC, uh, or heck, I don't mind if you post it on Keith's. I don't think Keith would mind either. Let's let's learn and let's take a look at what Keith's going to do uh, to get hit. I think it's his plasma cam with a new router head to make this part out of Delrin. Take care, folks. See you next Friday.